us to remain standing just a moment for prayer. As we bow our heads now, I wonder in the assembly here and in the basement, if there was an up in the balcony, wherever, if anyone in divine presence would like to be uh, known tonight before God in a special request, would you just raise your hands to Him now and hold your thought now, what you're thinking, and just believe that Christ stands right before you. Heavenly Father, we are standing here with our hands up. And as the brother has said, it's a universal sign of surrender. And we surrender ourselves to you as lumps of clay that's come from the earth. And we pray, God, that you'll fill them tonight with thy spirit and life. And get glory to thyself. Speak to us tonight. Work to us to thy honor. Answer every request, Lord, that you know them all. You know what's behind our hands and our motives, our objectives, and what we want and the, what we would do with it if we got it. And Lord, I pray that you would purify our hearts and thoughts and minds, that if we would receive what we're asking for, it would be to your honor. For the glory of God, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me be seated. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord tonight. I may feel just a little stopped up. Satan's been trying to hand me a bad cold ever since New York. And every time he hands it to me, I hand it right back to him. Then he hands it to me, and then I hand it right back to him, see? So we're kind of fussing over that. So I know the Lord will step in and etwa, take the sides. And so and uh, I pray that the Lord will grant uh, all your requests tonight. Now, we have given tonight for healing service. Now, I guess many of you wonder, usually in coming across the country, they, I'm now I'm going to have a meeting. The first thought is divine healing. See? But there's more to the ministry than divine healing. See? The sickest body I know of tonight is the so-called body of Jesus Christ. It needs spiritual healing. There's only one bomb that I know that'll heal, and that's the Word. And that's the sick body that we want to stand up in the strength and the vitamin power of the gospel. And that's why I use much of the time now and trying to strengthen the church by the Word. Now, I know I'm a poor substitute to take the place of a minister, a scholared minister. But I do believe this with no disregards to, to the ministry of a scholarship. I wish I had it. And I'm not trying to support my ignorance by saying this. But what we need now more than we do the intellectual side to know how to put the Word together and make it masterly fit is God. We need God. And, see, and uh, it doesn't always come through uh, rightly formed words. It, it, it comes through a, a dedicated heart. And that heart dedicated to God and doing the will of God. Now, you've got to know the will before you can do the will. Find out what you're here for. It isn't just a... I've always thought the church wasn't a haphazard. Jesus never came to earth in a haphazard way. He never died in a haphazard way. He come for a purpose. And that purpose was to fulfill... The commandment of God that he might purchase to himself a church without spot or wrinkle. That church is a predestinated church. Every name that was ever put on that book, Jesus came to redeem. And when the last name's redeemed, the book is closed. Now, he didn't intend that no one to be lost, but his foreknowledge let him know who would be lost. Therefore, he could predestinate. And then their names were put on the book. And then when that book of redemption is closed and sealed with seven seals while it's being worked out by the, myst by the mysterious powers of God. And someday when the book of redemption is finished, the Lamb takes it. And then the last name is called off of that. The Lamb comes forward to call for what he has redeemed. That's his church. And I believe that time is close at hand. 
And now I've had a pretty hard times of doing this. And one thing is trying to keep uh, my, my record clear. Uh, many times I've had much times advertised with uh, places where I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, never know nothing about being there. And a, a false advertisement, just anything Satan could throw at me, uh, he's done it. Someone come the other day said, I want to know if that is true. Uh, are we going to be there? I, I just want to know it. See, I hear just recently I was advertised in New York. No, not one thing about it. One of the Christian businessmen told the man I was to be there during that time. And I told him it would be all right. And that was... That was in the month of October, their convention was. And I told this certain man I was to be there in November. First week in November was to be in New York. And I would speak at their convention if it was that time. He said, well, that's when it's going to be. But he said, October. See that little thing? And the man in New York, before asking and selling us, advertised all across the state see, to be there. A few weeks ago, there's a circular letter put up here in Memphis, Tennessee. Had my name signed to it photostat copy and said I'd been with this person for 30 days on a fast three days as long as I ever fast in my life the person I never heard his name in my life said I come out with a fast from him with him rather and said that uh, I was to be there on certain days tell all my friends around Memphis to be there at this certain meeting I never heard of the place never know the man never know nothing about it in my life and a false forged signature. I don't even sign my name. I don't believe anybody could re-impersonate my signature because I don't even know it after you sign it. So it's, it's such a bad thing. I don't see how did anybody try to, uh, try to make that. I was at the bank here not long ago. We have to take count of everything on count of we keep it straight like that. With a cancel check is, a, is the best receipt you can have. And I, we've been doing that ever since we were married. And so... Um, the banker said, I don't believe anybody could ever forge that signature, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> I said, well, you know, they say everything works together for good. <laughs> and uh, so uh, there, uh, them things keeps it hard. Makes people think that you lie when I, I didn't know nothing about being there. And uh, makes it, therefore, with no publications or nothing, I've tried to keep my ministry where I could go anywhere the Lord called me. I had no obligations to nothing or nobody but God. Just stay with Him. My purpose has been in the church is to try to get that idea away from these American people that you have to lay hands on them. Uh, I, when you do that, it looks like that you're... They say, well, brother so-and-so come lay hands on me. Just let Jesus lay His hands on you, see? And your faith reach up and touch Him. But now I've had about 16 years and have totally failed with it. See? They go, cause there's too many that wants to believe it the other way. And so we satisfy the people. We do it anyhow. Lay hands upon them. But my opinion that if we can see the presence and know that Jesus Christ is here, what more do you need when the whole congregation is praying at one time? See? That's when the power of the Lord falls. When the word is known, faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word. When the word is being preached and it's the truth, God proving his presence that that should do the work right there. Now, now tomorrow morning, uh, tonight rather, th uh, pardon me, tonight I've just got a, a short subject because we're going to pray for the sick. But tomorrow morning now, uh, I think I'm going to have the Sunday school lesson. Is that right? It'll be all in the auditorium here. And um, I've got a, a, a subject that I would like, if the Lord willing, was uh, if he permits me, I have to say it that way, see. I think if you, if you don't have your own Sunday school now, if you have your own Sunday school, go to your Sunday school. You want to hear it? They got tapes. So um, uh, I'd have a, a, something on my heart that I'd like to speak about. Maybe would be a, a great help to you understanding the, uh, the reason of preaching the gospel the way that I've tried to preach it and believe it. See, it's... Uh, what the reason God has did the mysteries of the gospel has been hid since the foundation of the world, but was supposed to be revealed in these last days. And so, if the Lord willing, I want to speak on that. Then tomorrow night is a closing service. And uh, we'd like for you to come out if you possibly could. Then from here to Yuma, and from Yuma to Phoenix, and then back, uh, we leave from there, and then I'm going away on a little hunting trip during time of the holiday, Christmas holiday with some friends of mine. 
My wife's going to visit her people. And, and then we're going from there to take a trip through California down and up the west, uh, the, the southern part of the states here through Louisiana and Texas and Florida. And then from there overseas, the Lord willing, for a long itinerary. And I do solicit your prayers. Now, it's, it would be fine if we could just re- enjoy the presence of His healing power and everything. But there's more goes with it than that. See? More goes with it. And then uh, that's the thing when you go to uh, getting into something. It's, uh, it crosses up people. Now, everybody believed in divine healing. while well, they'd just fall right straight for that divine healing and say, Praise God, shout and have a great time. But then what about... That's just the bait on the hook. See? That's just the, uh, the bait. The hook is what catches the fish. And the hook is the word. Now, Jesus is a very popular man as long as he just prayed for the sick. Now, we're not Jesus, but it's, it's him working through us. All of us. Together. He's just not one person. He's an ever believer. That's how we believe unto life. And now, in that, see, shows... That no matter how much God would anoint me right here at this platform. If he don't anoint you the same way out there, nothing will happen. Amen. It takes both of us together. Right. We, we got to be both that we got to both be believers. Amen. Unless there's something that he wants to call just to show his great power. You know, let something be done. That, let somebody that's trying to do something that's not right or something. He call that out. See, but you have to. We just watch that. Of course, sometimes he tells us things and people tell us told things that they don't want to hear. And I don't want to say it, but if he's doing the talking, we just do the listening and then the, the repentance. Now, think on these things and pray. And remember now, as I typed his ministry, see, first, the prophet of Galilee, everybody believed him to be a prophet. But he was a prophet to heal the sick. But when he went to tampering in with the Pharisees and Sadducees and their traditions, then he become a madman, they said. He's crazy. They wanted nothing to do with him. And it finally led to his crucifixion. And well, that's the way it's always did down through the Bible. It's done the same thing, and it'll have to do the same thing this way. Being as God, it'll have to come to that very end of time. But you'll never crucify a message. You might crucify the messenger. But you'll never crucify his message if it's from God. Because it's a message. He's just a barrier of the message. Now, I've been, we've been talking for a few minutes. Watching, It's just exactly 8 now. And I want to try to have the church dismissed at 9.30. So you can get to a rest and get to Sunday school. And tomorrow is a great day. This will be two services for me today. And, and when I was a young fellow, two services is hard on any minister. If you take it with all your heart. Now, if you just go there for a little intellectual talk, you could make them ever 30, 40 minutes through the day and never bother you. But when you put your whole heart there, Amen. holding the Spirit of God before the people, that's different. Now, let us pray. Heavenly Father, let thy blessings and mercy rest upon us now as we move from our talk into the Word. And let the Word be made flesh among us again tonight, that the church might once more, all of us together, See, feel, and know the presence of Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord. For we love Him. His presence is life to us. And may we rest tonight in the Shekinah glory. And recognize that it is Shekinah glory in His presence. We ask it in Jesus' name that He'll break the word for us now. Amen. Now, turn in your Bibles if you care to. To the book of St. Mark, the fourth chapter. And uh, in my text tonight, I'm going to call it, Go Awake Jesus. And my subject tonight is calling Jesus on the scene. Go awake him, call him on the scene. Here's a scripture reading out of St. Mark, fourth chapter, beginning with 35th verse. And the same day... When the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. Wouldn't that make a wonderful text? Take him as he is. Take him the way he's presented to you. Take him in the ship. 
And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat against the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? And the scripture says he's the same. The winds and the waves obey him. He must have been a little tired that day. Our scene finds our Lord tonight as we try to take each time a setting of where he's at and what he's doing. I love to follow him, don't you? I just love to follow him and watch his works. And just to think that someday we will be with him and follow him. With him in person like we're seeing with our sense of sight as we do now. And... And be with him forever. Oh, just to look at him would be good enough for me. Just to see him. That would that, that be sufficient for me. Amen. And um, now we try to take the scene and we find him here. Where he's at. What he's doing. And trouble comes up. And how he takes care of the trouble. And tells them why they couldn't do it. And we find him out on the sea. Uh, in the back of a boat. He just had a, an awful day. No doubt, but what his body was tired and he was wearied. And feeling uh, tired and weak, virtue went out of him because he had been preaching and, and showing his great sign of who he was and testifying to the people and healing the people. And, and the crowds, had, some cheered and some booed. Could you imagine people doing that to Jesus? It looked like they had no better than that. Well, you say that. They do the same thing today. It's the same. See, if he come today and just in the same uh, uh, thing, the way he did then, the people today would boo him and call him crazy just as they did then. It'd be just the same. And they do do it. They would not understand him. The world never did understand the true moving of God. And it never will understand it because it's a world. A world seeth me no more, he said, but you shall see me because I'll be with you and I'll be in you to the end of the world. If the people could just see that one quotation from him right there, they'd recognize where we're at tonight. Amen. Could you imagine a person that never had the sense of sight, never did see, and you'd bump against objects, you'd have to drive your food from energy from some other resource. But you would, uh, you'd bump into something. You had a sense of feeling, but not sight. And then all at once, somebody opened their eyes up and seen a complete different world. You never had seen anything. And you, they'd say, well, now that you feel real warm on you, that is the sun. What is the sun? It's a light. What is light? See, he never lived in that sense. He doesn't know what it is. That you bump against this certain, certain thing. Well, what's that? See, he never lived in that dimension at all. It would be very strange to him to know it. Well, now, if God lets us live, we're a bodily here in five senses. But there is another sense. And then when we wake up into that sense, and that is a sense of vision. And we see that thing, that what it is that makes us feel these things that we do and try to tell someone about it. Just be like telling a man that never did see in his life. He wouldn't understand it because he's, he's not acquainted with that sense. And that's the way it is in the gospel. They, they don't understand it. It's hard to get them to see it because that they've never lived in there. They know nothing about it. They feel it and they, they can have the reaction of it. But to actually know what it is, we don't. So when you can see beyond that curtain where that comes from and then try to come back and tell people that's only felt it with a sense of feeling like and never have been able to see it, it's hard to tell them, man. But you just have to do the best you can until we all see face to face. Now, we see Jesus here, tired, weary. And I just imagine 
He knew when there's a big job the next day ahead of him over in Gadaria where there was one soul that was calling out for God. Can you imagine Jesus taking a tired and weary and crossing a stormy sea just to get to one soul? But he does it. That's the way he does it. The ship was crossing and he took this opportunity to take a little rest to wake up. And his disciples had gone back to their oars and their daily task, what they had done. The revival for that day was over. Something like today, I believe. I believe it's the same thing. And during this time, he had, he had t- taken a, a little rest, maybe just between the meetings. And the disciples went back to their old task. Now, let's just break in upon them. I believe they might have been rejoicing, talking about the things that they had seen done that day. There have been great things that have taken place. People have been healed, leprosy, and is having a great time. And as they went along about their work in the church, or they, a church is not the building, it's the people makes the church. And they was rejoicing in what they had seen done, and they might have been discussing uh, uh, his messiahship, his claims. He claimed to be the Word. He claimed to be the Word and the message for that hour, and the prophet who had been the Word before there introduced him and said, My time is finished. I have fulfilled my part, the Word, that I was supposed to fulfill. Now, He's going to manifest the rest of the Word from here out. So my time is over, John. So he had to get off the scene and when Jesus come on the scene. And when He come on the scene, He come just exactly and doing just exactly and acting just exactly the way the Messiah was supposed to act, what He was supposed to do. And that might have been their discussion as they talked. Maybe some of them had testimony. One of them would say, you know, I never had thought of, of it so much until I began to read the Scriptures what Messiah was supposed to be because he was to be that prophet. And then I understand that another thing, when I seen him break that bread and feed those people, who could create but God himself? So that has to be Messiah. And they, no one can create but God. God's the only creator there is. And here he took five little biscuits and two little fishes and fed 5,000 and taken up seven baskets full of pieces left over. Well, nothing could do that but Jehovah, the same one that rained bread down out of the skies. That's the only one could do it. And here he is, no one among us in a humble form of a carpenter, an ordinary man. Here's the Jehovah's that lived in the heavens. No one could see him. The invisible God is made visible here among us. For we know him, he does the same works that Jehovah did. And he said to them, if I do not the works of my father, then believe me not. Messiah was supposed to be Jehovah, Emmanuel, God with us. And if I don't do the works of Emmanuel, if I don't act like the Emmanuel, my works is not like the Emmanuel, then then I'm not Emmanuel. But if you can't believe me, just watch the works that I do. They testify who I am. And that might have been their uh, discussion as they were talking. And then the subject might have come up after that when maybe many of them could have testified. There was Andrew, he could have testified. Peter could have said what Jesus said to him. Why, call me by my name. Who would know my name except God? He called me what my name was. He told me who I was. He called my father's name. And the man never had seen me. Well, it's got to be the Messiah. And we notice, now we find out then, and they might have discussed the attitudes of the people towards that. That might have been their next discussion. Jesus is sleeping all the time. Went back to rest. Now, let's just break in on the scene and watch them. The attitudes of the people. Some of them said, well, some of them believed. Some of them said, a man never spoke like this before. For what that man says, God backs up what he says. And we know by our, our Scripture that if God vindicates this man, what he says comes to pass, then we know that God's with that man and God has told us to fear that man because he's with him. His word is my, God's word. So fear him. And they, they said, now that's the reason they feared greatly after they seen him make the winds and waves obey. They tremble because they know that was God. It had to be. God honored His Word. What He said, it happened. 
Then they knew that was the Messiah. Now, as they was discussing the attitude, they said some of them believed and some would not believe. Now, we always find that amongst the churches. Every congregation, we find three classes of people. Frankly, I preached on it here not long ago. I believe it in New York City or somewhere. Um, three classes of people. And that is believers, unbelievers, and make-believers. And just a chapter or two after this, we find out that his own crew came to that. And proved exactly that that's what they were. Now, let's just think of the believers and unbelievers just a second here. The believers are the one that's ordained and predestinated to the Word. As minute they see it, they're satisfied, life springs in them, and they accept it. That's the disciples. There's no question in their mind about it all. They follow right along. The disciples were believers. They believe. Now, most of the time... A real unbeliever will pretend that he does believe. Now, the unbeliever was like the 70. They followed along in the popularity and in the tinsel of his uh, ministry. They was glad to stand up there when he could raise the dead and cleanse the lepers and, and foretell the things that was happening just right. But one day, he spoke something out of their creed. And as soon as he said something that interfered with what they believed, the 70 said, this is a hard saying. So what will you say if you see the Son of Man descending up into heaven where he came from? Now, this man that we sleep with, this man that eats with us, this man that washes his face and hands in the same basin we wash in, this man that eats like I do, sleeps like I do, has his ups and downs and say, He came down from heaven? That's too much for me. See? And what did they do? They couldn't sit through the meeting. They got up and went out. See? Feel that? That's unbelievers. See? They couldn't stand it. No, sir. They left and didn't walk with Him no more. Now, there is believers who there's nothing can separate them from it. And there's the unbelievers it's just as soon as anything said that don't agree with what they believe. Remember, the Bible teaches us that the unbeliever will be so close like the real believer that it will deceive the very elected if it was possible. Okay? That's unbelief. But just as soon as something said that they don't like, gone. See, that's unbelief. That shows just exactly when the light of life is shining to bring that seed, what could it do up on a rock? It'll do nothing. What could it do up on dead substance? It's not sent for dead substance. The sun shines for a seed that's germatized to life. And this Bible and His Word in the hour that we live is shining upon those to catch the eternal life, those who are predestinated to see it. And it won't do one bit of good upon the rest of them. There's no life there to come forth by the sun or by the light. Then we find out that they turn their backs and walk with him no more. That's when the great noble thing said about uh, Simon Peter said. Jesus, after the 70 left him, when he said, well, what? He gave him some strong doctrine. He, his healing days was just about over. He didn't care. He wasn't going to heal too much more. He was going to tell him about something that was better. And he said... He began to tell him that he there revealed to him who he actually was. What will you say if you see the Son of Man ascending up into heaven from whence he has come? Now, we have your birth record. Here you were born by of Mary and Joseph down in uh, Nazareth. And here you say you come down from heaven? Well, that's... You're crazy, I believe. See? Well, we wouldn't want to follow a man like that. So away they went. They went. That's unbelievers. But notice, now there's believers, no matter what happens, what takes place, how hard it is, how mysterious, they believe anyhow. That's like the man or woman is prayed for. They believe it. There's nothing going to make them change their mind. They are genuine believers. And nothing, no matter how hard it seems, what this is and this don't happen, that don't have nothing to do with it. 
They believe it anyhow. Now, he might have said many things that the disciples didn't believe or didn't see, but they believed it anyhow. They went on along with it because they were sure the Scripture had thoroughly identified Jesus to be that Messiah. I believe the Scripture today thoroughly identifies this great move of God in the last days of the Holy Ghost to be Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe the Scripture thoroughly identifies it. I don't care what anyone else thinks about it. We believe that to be the truth because it's thoroughly identified. You say, Brother Bram, I know you understand it. I do not understand it. I just believe it. I can't understand these things. I don't try to. You can't understand God. He's got to be accepted by faith. And faith is something you believe that you can't explain. There you are. There is the truth. Now, there's another group that always hangs around, and that's the make-believer. Now, that make-believer is considered the hypocrite. Now, let's take a make-believer. It was Judas. He was a make-believer. And the make-believer hangs on and on trying to find some way that they can get something on it. They stick around long enough just to find out if they can't find a little fault. They can go out and expose it somewhere. We want to find what kind of a gimmick, what rabbit foot you got rubbed behind your ears. What is the gimmick so they can impersonate it or something? That's make-believers. That's Judaitarian. That's the unbelievers, the make-believers, and the believers. Them three still exist. Everywhere across the world, they've always had and they always will. Now, think of it tonight. Here and on this tape, to those out here, them three classes is setting. They are three classes of those people always gathered. One that don't make any difference, what comes or what goes, they still believe it. They're thoroughly convinced. Others will believe so much of it and then don't want to believe the rest. That's unbelievers. And then the make-believers is the ones that hangs on just sticking around until they can find something. They say, aha, there you are. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. There, I thought there was something. There you are. But a real believer, that don't stagger him at all. Amen. Nothing staggers him. Right. What about Jesus standing there, spit over his face, and blood on his face, and a crown of thorns upon him, and, and all that uh, he had there, a mockery crowd, and so forth. Well, what would the unbeliever think about that? Or the make-believer just sold him out. And you find out the make-believer is the one who sells you out. <laughs> He's the one that ruins your ministry. Is that make-believer? But the real believer, no matter what, they're thoroughly satisfied. They're thoroughly convinced because the life that's in them has already become Christ. It is Christ. It's no more you, but Christ that lives in you. And no matter, there's nothing, Paul said, present, future, death, peril, nakedness, Whatever it is can separate us from that love of God that's in Christ. Amen. No many, how many this, that, or the other eyes, how many doctors of divinity can try to explain it away and say it's for another day. That don't separate you at all. You're there to stay. It's you in Christ. You're no more your own. That's you. You and God alone. And as soon as uh, the unbeliever can get a loophole, he's trying to get away anyhow. So the way he goes to make believer is staying on a little longer till he can find something he can pile some criticism on it. So there's your three all together. That's the kind that they had then. That's the kind that they have now. That's the kind they'll always have until Jesus himself or God at the great white throne judgment will separate him. Some said a man never spoke like this man. What he says comes to pass. Others, the unbelievers, said he's Beelzebub. He's beside himself. The man has lost his mind. You know, there is a great thing that Satan tries to do. He tries to make the, the, the messenger, the people who's really got the Holy Spirit, try to say that they have lost their mind. I got a little circle letter on that the other day. Uh, out said, poor Brother Branham. Said, we believe that he was Elijah. And said, you know, that 
that, uh, you know, he lost his mind and said the Elijah's uh, garment fell upon Elisha. That's my wife. And she takes up the ministry to go on with a double potion. <laughs> a woman. <laughs> was it, did Elijah lose his mind or was he taken up without death in a chariot to heaven? <laughs> But you just had that, you see. That's, that's what we have to contend with. Some of them said, the unbelievers said, this guy's Beelzebub. It must have been John. Said, just think of this one who does all this. Now it's back to the believers again. I said, just think the one that has done all of this that we're thinking about and talking about and a different people's expression. We're all believers. He said, we believe it. Yes, sir. We are satisfied that we know that it's truly identified. There he lays, a mortal man laying right there on that deck, right back there in that little bunkhouse like asleep on a pillar. We put him back in our seat, but think of it. The very God of creation is sailing through these waters with us. Oh, man. Amen. Them waters are stretches. You know, a storm came up, and it still does the same thing. If you ever around Jerusalem, I guess, Jack, you remember them storms still sweep right down through that crack there and hit that sea and drown the fishermen just like it did them. Come up. You can't even see the storm coming all at once. It's there. And just think now, we've all, all of our lives, dreaded to cross this dangerous water here. But remember, the very one that we know is the Creator is laying right there in the boat with us. I feel good, don't you boys? They say, Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. There he is in the boat. And what it is to know the day that we're living in. That they had seen the identification that and was satisfied, no matter what anybody else has said, their discussion had been about believers and make believers and so forth, but they themselves believed it. And they know that they had him with them. No matter what any of the rest of the people, they were happy to have him. I am too, aren't you? No matter what the rest of the world said. I'm happy to know that he's sailing life's troubled seas with me right in the boat. Amen. Amen. Sailing over life's solemn seas as he does. And in all the treacherous waters, not knowing what time you could be shot, killed, dropped dead. Whatever might take place. But the Creator, what are you anyhow? You're a little lump of Louisiana clay with some life in it. That's all. Even if you're moving Texas, that big place, you're still just a lump of Texas mud with a little moisture in it. And that's all you are. It's exactly. And that's what you're going back to. But after all, how could that mud walk, breathe, eat if there wasn't some life in it? And think it had to be created. And the very Creator that created it is riding in that mud ship. Amen. Amen. He made me what I am without a desire. How much more can He raise me up by my desire? By a word of His promise. Sailing over life's solemn main. We ought to live like Him. Let His Spirit work to us. For a forlong and shipwrecked brother in seeing shall take heart again. Thank He's with us securely. What a feeling of security. While sailing these treacherous waters, it must have been something like us right now at this very present time. After the revival, feasting on the results. I remember my first trip to Shreveport, Louisiana. I never heard of Jack Moore. I believe it was a Brother Richard Reed. I haven't seen Brother Reed for years that told me about Brother Moore down here or Brother Kidson. One of them brothers, I forget who it was now. I got acquainted with Brother Jack. I come down here to his lovely little old mother. She's sitting around here somewhere. And she had a stomach trouble. And we prayed for her. She's eating baby food. She's been able to eat ever since. Or normal food. And how, how what a great revival come up. It's spearheaded out. Then along come Billy Graham and Old Roberts and, and Tommy Osborne. Great man warriors. Come off of that a uh, little flicked off of the revival. Done great things. That day down there, about 33 years ago, 34, standing on the banks of the Ohio River there at the bridge, and about 5,000 people or more gathered on the banks. 
I was just about 20 years old, 23, 22 or 23 years old. My first revival, I was baptizing 500 people that afternoon. And the deacons had led me out in the water. About the 17th person when I was baptizing, I heard a voice say, Look up! And I turned to look up. Billy's mother, we wasn't even married then, just going together. Here come that pillar of fire circling out of the bright blue skies at 2 o'clock on June the 15th, coming right down out of the skies like that. And a voice roared out all over the place there and said, As John the Baptist was sent forth to forerun the first coming of Christ, you have the message allowed forerun the second coming of Christ. Hallelujah. Photographers taking the picture. Hallelujah. How could we believe that with a, just barely a grammar school education and so forth? But I believed it that afternoon when I was so tired, when I got finished baptizing, they had to come get me out of the water. I couldn't hardly stand them over the current of the river. And um, it went come down and they took the pictures of his own Associated Press went worldwide almost up into Canada. Brother Lee Vale uh, has a copy of it yet, I think, from on the Associated Press of Mystery Light hangs over a local Baptist minister while baptizing at the foot of Spring Street in Jeffersonville, Indiana. The Louisville uh, Herald picked it up, took the pictures and went off and away it went across on the Associated Press. Now, that's been many years ago. How could it be so? But it was so. God said so. That makes it right. And what a, a glorious thing to know that we have the living God. And from there has brought forth revival fires all around the world. And now great healing campaigns and great mysterious things has gone on. When I first come among you, I said, I'd have to take you by the hand and just hold you like that for a connection. And then I wouldn't think of what I was going to say and you could see the results of it. It still happens. And see it like that. And then he told me, if you'll be sincere, it'll come to pass that you'll know the very secret of their heart. You all, many of you people remember that. And it come to pass just that way. Just exactly. A few years after that, I was up in Queen City, Regina, and Canada. And I stand on the platform with Dr. Ern Baxter and him. And a man come walking across the platform. And the first thing, I didn't even know what I was saying. Called his name, told him what was the matter with him. And there it went. Since then it went on. Now it's come to another stage that I can never tell, but it'll speak for itself. But remember, in the great uh, ministry, it made a revival fire. It went around the world. And now in the last few years, that revival lasted longer than any revival we ever know in history. No historian can say that a revival lasted hardly over three years at any time. But this has gone 15 years or more. Straight, constant revival. But now, the revival's died out. Just barely, then come up the ladder rain and a little tail of it kind of sweeps through England now and there. Just the last kick of it is just about over the church to settle down into Lady Osea again. And make the age. It has to be that way. Exactly it has to be that way. And now, we are feasting tonight upon the... Uh, uh, the scraps that we're picking up from that revival. That's about the way those disciples were from that day's revival, waiting for the next day. Jesus, during that time, was resting. Maybe He was resting from the revival like He was resting on the seventh day after He made the earth in six. Then the Bible said He rested. He rested the seventh day. Well, maybe that's what He was doing. He was resting. Then all of a sudden, trouble set in. Oh, just let the church start to rest a little bit. And then trouble sets in. Ship began to rock. The sails blew off and the water filled up the boat. Seemed like all hope or survival was gone. Though they had seen him do so many things, when trouble strikes... Now here, I'm going to close just a few minutes because we're going to start the prayer line. We've seen all those things. We've seen the pro and con of the people. And now it comes to a place where it's kind of a slack. We're talking about what he has done and so forth. And looking for what he's going to do. That's just human. Human beings are always telling what God did do, what they believe he's going to do, and forgetting what he's doing. <laughs> they did the same thing. They had seen him out there heal the sick and raise the dead and foreknow things and tell the people the secrets of their hearts. 
and believed that they were on the road to another revival, but when trouble set in, they forgot all about it. That's just the way we do. That's where we sit tonight. Sitting in that same spot. And yet, if we only knew He's in the ship, He's just as great here as He was when He was laying in that ship. He's just as great as He was when He stood in space and created the world. He's just as great as He was with Moses at the Red Sea. He's as great as He was at the grave of Lazarus. He's as great as He was when He healed the leper, gave sight to the blind. He's as great as He was in the days of the Welsh revival. He's just as great as He was in any time. And He's here in the ship. Trouble set in. We go places, find fusses in the church, tear up. Do you know that'll ruin a church? Stay together. Amen. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred mind is like to that above. Amen. That imparable love and faith in God and each other. But we find out the water supply gets low and in my country where I live in Tucson, everything out there has got a sticker on it. Every, everything you look at has got a sticker. And because it's so dry. Now, if it was here in this country and could grow, it'd have a real soft leaf. That sticker is a leaf rolled up. So tight and so sharp, there's not an instrument could be ground like it. No instrument could be ground like a jumping cactus. Because it's got a beard on it, a little hook all the way down to the end. And still, you couldn't grind an instrument like that. But nature has rolled at that. And it'll jump right on you. You don't have to get, uh, get into it. It gets on you. And that's the way it's sin. You don't have to get into it. It gets on you. It'll jump to you. Don't get around it. Stay away from unbelief. But we're living in that time. So they'd seen him do so many great things and they could talk about it. But when a time of trouble set in, it was all forgotten. Now just think about the things that we've seen him do. With the infallible proof of the identification of his word. And know that the, that the great Holy Spirit here in the last days is the messenger of the hour. He's the one who is proving to us and making every promise that he promised to do. Every sign and every work and every word to come to pass just as he said he would do. And it still looked down. A, if it was accepted in the big high ranks, I'd get away from it. It couldn't be God and accepted up there. No, sir. No, indeed. It would never be. If it's accepted, but because it's down in this way, that's the reason I believe it. That's where it comes to. That's where it's promised to. And now, we see everything just exactly in line and knowing that we're in the last days. And what's happened? Trouble set in. And all that we've seen him do... How he straightened up our homes. How he'd make father and mother unite again. You've seen that? Husband and wife, come back together. He's healed your sick. Laying there with cancers. When many of you brought them in bottles and jugs and pans and doctors has testified, signed statements, I got piles of them and uh, uh, put a box full. And even five cases witnessed of the raising of the dead. After being dead for hours and hours, well, from the longest one I know of was from 9 o'clock one morning till 11 that night about. See? Uh, no, I beg your pardon. A little baby over there that the mother carried it all night in her arms. It died one afternoon. She carried it all night in her arms. Come to the meeting down there in California. And I was taken out that afternoon. I died the afternoon before that. And it, she drove all night, got there, couldn't get around the place. And she laid a cold little form in my arms of a dead baby that had died the day before that. And standing holding that little baby and just offered prayer, his little body got warm, it turned over and looked, and I handed it back to its mother. Now, but then when we see those things and have them thoroughly examined and identified, certainly, then why do we get scared? When trouble comes in, they were looking and for they'd done so much testifying about what had been done, they forgot who was with them. They'd forgotten that uh, then cause trouble was in. Like now, we got troubles that we can't remedy. 
They tried their sails. And the wind was too hard. It blew them off. They tried their oars. And the waves were so great, it broke. Broke their oars. Then they, their little ship was let drive. They probably tied the keel down to the, of the rudder. And when they did, just had to let it drive. Just any way it would go. And it dashing, splashing. You have to ride a wave in a boat. You fellows that ride a boat know you can't face right into a wind like that, right into the wave. If you do, you'll pitch your boat right at the bottom. So you've got to guide this boat. Let it roll with the wave. As the waves roll, you roll right in and out with it. When you're, if you don't, you'll fill your boat full of water. Well, after everything had broken, they couldn't hold it no more. They just had to let it drive. Amen. And when they did, then the boat filled up. It looked like all hopes is gone. And there they was all troubled and scared. What a time it was. It's a trouble that they could not remedy anymore. And then fear set in when they found out they couldn't remedy it. And we've hit likewise trouble. We've hit trouble. At, uh, we, national troubles that our nation can't remedy. Look at the hoodlums in our nation. Just shot our president. Then went and shot the boy. That's just as much hoodlum as God shot the president, in my opinion. He's a cold-blooded murder. If he gets by with that, then they'll keep on doing him. you will probably get by with it, too. <laughs> but, just look what they do. The whole world, if we put a Abraham Lincoln in every parish and every county, they'd still do it anyhow. See? It's troubles we can't remedy. The, the thing sin, unbelief, and evil has just weeded into us, grown around us, wrapped the whole nation in it. We got church troubles, arguments, fusses. Seems like we can't remedy it. We got now, what they're trying to do now, they've all got together for the council of churches. We, we can't remedy it. We tried to introduce the Word. Christ tried to bring it back by showing Himself the resurrection. For 2,000 years, He's still the same. They turned their back upon it, walked away. They're unbelievers. Make believers still hang on to find a fault with it. Just as much as they can. On and on. But what is it? It's the same thing repeating again. The Word you ought to know. What was the remedy for all things? Is God. And St. John 1 says He is the Word. We still have the Word to bring us out of this. We don't need no council of churches. We don't need all these dogmas and things being mixed up into the Word. We've got the Bible here that tells us how to stir this thing. Back to the Bible. Back to its message. That's Christ among us. The Bible, living Bibles. Your written epistles, living Bibles. The Word of God living so through you. That's what we need. That's what caused communism to raise up in Russia. Well, the communist is not no great party. There's only 1% of Russia's communism now. 1%. 99% is still free. But they're the ruling. They're the ruling. Why did it raise up in the first place? Because the corruption of the church. That's what done it. They took all the money from the people to the church and they lived the same kind of lives. There was no more but just like any other lodge. And the people got sick and tired of it. And that's how communism was born. That's how worthyism is born here. That's why we're having a council of churches. That's why we're con uh, going into this uh, confederacy and the things that we're doing is because that they have rejected the Word. Amen. Why do they have a soup supper in the church to pay the pastor? Because they reject God's way of paying tithes. Amen. Certainly. Amen. Why do they take a creed? Because they don't want the Bible. Amen. Why do they take an error? Because they don't want the truth. If a man run in the basement and shut his eyes and say, I refuse to say the sun's is shining, there ain't no hopes for him. But if he's willing to look, the sun's shining. If he wants to come out and enjoy its blessings, all right. But if he don't, you can't do nothing about it. You say there's something mentally wrong with the man. Well, there's something spiritually wrong with the man that'll take a creed instead of God's word that's contrary to it. Amen. At the day of the crucifixion, they desired Barabbas, a murderer, instead of the word. And today they're taking the counsel a murder of the Word. And instead of taking the Word identified among us. It's the same thing. That's the trouble that we've got into. Now, his disciples get in trouble sometimes. His disciples, like those, of physical troubles that the doctors can't remedy. Maybe they say you got cancer. It's advanced. 
Maybe he got advanced TB. Some kind of trouble. We like them forget who's in the ship. There was a storm on. Now God created the winds. God created the air. God created the water. It's all His creation. He made it. But you see, it was a devil that got into it and whipped it up. That's what causes trouble. It's the devil. And now, if he is a creator and made it thus in the beginning, shouldn't those disciples know that that creator laying right there can make it stop? Amen! Amen. Amen. God made you to be healthy. The devil got in. Don't you think he'll have to obey him the same as the wind? He made your body. He made you a human being. He give you eyes and give you health. I would above all things that you prosper in health. It's the devil that gets in there. Right. The only thing he's ready to do tonight, he's been resting from the revivals, but he's ready to be called. They should have known that he knew that was going to happen. He knew all things. He knew it would happen. It was only proving, only proved to be only a test of their faith. I doubt him even being asleep. He's just laying back there. He knew it was going to happen. Huh. Just wait to see what this go to do. Hear him out there testifying. Oh, glory to God. We're satisfied. That's the Messiah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. We know it. That's the truth. And say, I just see. All right, Satan, turn loose now. <laughs> Looked out there. And, oh, all hopes is gone. Oh, we're going to perish, boys. What can we do? And the Creator Himself has been talking about laying right there with Him. Hallelujah. The very God that gave us the Holy Ghost. The very Holy Ghost that fell on Pentecost. Right here with us tonight. Amen. Very one that raised the dead, healed the sick, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Proving to us that He's here with us. Maybe you let this slump call come in here just to find out what you do. That's the way He does it, to prove your faith. See what you'll do. Run away. Don't the Bible say all things will work together for good to them that love Him? He had thoroughly proved who He was. He's thoroughly proved today who He is. Boy, he's proved just like he did then. He's still Messiah. Still the same. He's still the Word. A discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. He still discerns just like he always did. He still heals just like he always did. He still creates just like he always did. He still raises the dead just on the resurrection of life. It's the same as he ever was. He proves it right among us and right in our ship. And then trouble sets in and oh, all hopes are gone. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that just like disciples? <laughs> That's right. He had proven who he was by the word and signs. They had been thoroughly vindicated that he was who he was. He said, if I don't do the works that's written to me, then don't believe me. But if I'm doing the works that's written to me, then believe it. I'm telling you the truth about it. What a, what a, it's the same thing we have today. He said, search the scriptures. They are they that testify me. They should have known he was the God of all creation that even could make if he made those that uh, air to be, he made this uh, earth to be, he made the water to be, the Creator laying there and showed that he had power over it all. And they believed that, but forgot about him being in the ship. Because he wasn't there patting them on the back all the time, saying, Now go ahead, boys. It's fixing to happen right here. Now, if it does happen, just remember, I'm standing right here by here. Comes right now, boys. Let's look. See, now, just a few minutes. Uh, oh, no, he don't do that. He tests every son and daughter that comes to him. See if we have believe him. Yes, sir. If he made it, wouldn't he obey him? Let us remember also he made our bodies. They have to obey him also. And they will obey him. This little, I called you a, a lump of Texas and Louisiana dust. That's what you are, mud. You was raised off the ground out there, and that's where you're going back. You got the 16 elements in you, a little moisture and a little petroleum, a little potash and a, a little calcium, some cosmic light, and that's about what you are. Twist it up together, and there you go. Dirt of Louisiana. That's all you are. But remember, something made you this. And the very one that made you this come to live in this with you. And he might make you something different. Oh, my. How we ought to look upon that. Remember, he promised that though this little clot of dirt go back into the this cloud that's walking around with the life in it, when the life leaves, it's right back dust again. But what did he say in his word? I'll raise it up again at the last stage. 
Amen. 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 I'll raise it up. Amen. He promised it. After the body has perished, after even the dust has broke out, and it goes back to the gases of the earth, yet, as I said the night, you can't annihilate nothing. Man can't. There's no annihilation. Man can't annihilate anything. It's only God can do that. And remember, he will, though it be a spoonful of ashes, he said, I'll raise it up again at the last day. That dirt will have to obey his commandment because he created it. If the wind and the wave obey him, so does the dirt obey him. Amen. Wake up. He's with us. All obeys him. After the disciples found themselves at the end of the road, it must have dawned on some of them that the Creator was with them. <laughs> Might have done. So we find out that they went and uh, woke him up. And for he was with them all the time. And they seen his scriptural word being vindicated. So have we. And we've uh, not, when we call Jesus, it wasn't hard then to have to go say, Oh, Master, wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh, Master, wake up, wake up. No, no. They just, Master! He said, here am I. <laughs> Carest thou not that we perish? He said, oh, where's your faith? You have little faith. That's it. Forgetting he's with us. Calling Jesus on the scene to act. People today said, if I could know for sure that that was him. If I could just be sure. How could they be sure? How was the disciples sure of it? Now, uh, listen. Not because... He was an educated man. As far as we know, he wasn't. He only had the wisdom of God. But the worldly education, I don't, we don't have no record of him ever going to school. But uh, some great priest or some great renowned person? No. No, we have no record of anything like that. Just a common man. But uh, how could they know? Now listen close now, don't miss this. How could they rest assured? We are sure that thou art that Christ. How could they? Because they seen the promised word vindicated. In other words, made manifest, made known. The living word of promise was made alive. Projected right through that body and they know that God was in him. Peter said, you men of Israel, Judea, Jesus of Nazareth, was a man approved of God among you by the things that God did by him. Nicodemus, that great scholarly man, came by night. He said, Rabbi, we know that you are uh, of God. Well, I said, no man could do those things that you did except God be with him. We we're aware of that, but why didn't he accept it? Why didn't he? See, it was against their tradition. See? No, yes, the only way that they knew he was is because he, he made God's word foretold for that day live itself. Do you understand? Amen. How many clearly understands that? Just raise your hand. See, he made the promised word of that day live. And they were sure that was the Messiah. That's what the woman said. So now look here. We haven't had a prophet for 400 years. And we know that the next prophet is to appear on the scene is to be the Messiah. And here's a man standing right out there that told me the things that I've done. Told me that I had five husbands. And you all are witnesses of that. And the man sitting right out there at the city well right now. He told me I had five husbands. Isn't this the very sign that the Messiah is supposed to do? He is the word, a discerner of the thoughts that's in the heart. Isn't that him? That's the reason that people know and were sure he was Messiah. That's the same way we know he's the Messiah. Because the Bible said he's the same yesterday and forever and promised to do this again in the last days. Well, they crucified him. Yeah, but he raised up again. Down in Mexico. The case that's talking about the little baby being raised with Brother Moore. They had me down on an interview a few days after that. The church did. Newspaper reporters. They said to me, now nah, if he's a Catholic person sitting here, I'm not throwing that off onto you now. Remember, my people are Catholic too. But look, they're fine people. They're people like we are. Hungering, many of them, and thirsting for God. This reporter said, as a notable thing, said, do you think our saints could do that? I said, if they're living. He said, they can't be a saint until they're dead. 
I said, was Peter a saint before he died or after he died? Was Paul a saint before he died or after he died? He did the same thing. They said, what's your opinion? Said, You're a, you are a, a, just a non-Catholic, aren't you? I said, no, sir, I'm a Protestant. He said, you don't protest. I said, I protest, not the people, the church's doctrine. And he said, um, he said, what's your opinion of the church? I said, I'm sorry you asked me that. And he said, go ahead and say it. I asked you. I said, the highest form of spiritualism that I know of. He said, spiritualism? I said, yes, sir. He said, how could you call the mother church spiritualism? I said, the mother what? He said, the mother church. I said, sir, the mother Roman church, yes. The church organization, she is the mother of that. Revelation 17 says she's that. The mother harlots. But I said, the church didn't begin in Rome. It began in Jerusalem. He said, God is in his church. I said, God is his word. <laughs> so he said, and you say it's the highest form of spiritualism, you know? So how could you say that? I said, anything that intercedes with the dead is spiritualism. All them women walk, going down the street there, pulling over rocks and things, doing penance to a dead woman her lover's killed. And make her a saint because she's canonized the church. I said, that's spiritualism. said, you pray to Jesus and he died. I said, but he arose again, sir. Oh, how the things. See, he rose again. I said, I hope it didn't hurt your feelings. He said, no, no harm done. I said, all right. (laughs) What? Yes, oh my. We forget who's in the ship. See? How can we know that he is the same yesterday and forever? Because then people that says it's not so, his ministry throws it right back into their laps. He is the same yesterday and forever. And you're just as guilty of his blood as Pilate was. It's on your hands. You can't wash it off. Did you ever think of that? How would you like to have the president's blood on your hands? What would you do? You know what's coming to you. Well, that's a minor thing to have the blood of Jesus on your hands. That's right. What if, if the man that killed the president, maybe Oswald didn't do it. They'll never know who done it, of course. But if he didn't do it, what if the man is alive tonight and knows he's got the president's blood on his hands? What will he do if they catch him and he has to face the Supreme Court, the justice of this nation? Look at the anger eyes looking down upon him. You know, he could plead mercies. I didn't mean to do it. I, I, I tell you, I, I'm a good fellow. I, I didn't mean to do it. There will be no mercy. It'd be bad to look across that Supreme Court like that. But what about looking across at the eyes of God when he got the blood of Jesus Christ and guilty of crucifying him afresh? What about that? Did you ever notice that uh, airplane pilot, before he goes up in the airplane, he's got, uh, checks every instrument he can. He'll take that plane out. He'll check everything and stand out there and rib it up and rib it up to see if it take off and everything. Why? He's awful careful. He's got blood on his hands if you don't watch. Look at a doctor for an operation. How he checks every tool, takes the x-ray and everything. Why? He's got that man on his hands. If he dies, the blood's on him. And he checks everything to be sure that the blood's not upon him. That's right. You don't want no blood on his hands. Human blood don't want to be on human's hands. But what are you going to do with the blood of Jesus Christ on your hands? Now, you can't throw it out and say, I don't believe that. The Bible condemns you. He says he's the same yesterday and forever. And here he is working, doing the same. The blood's on your hands anyhow. You can't wash it off. Pilate tried that. It couldn't be enough water to wash it off his hands. He tried to pass it on to his organization to hire up the presbyter. said, if he'd let me do it. But it backfired. It comes right back to you. You can't get it off your hands no way in the world but accept it. The only way to get it off your hands is get it on your heart. That's the only way to do it. And when we see Jesus Christ today manifest himself here just exactly like he all, when he did here on earth and promised to do it, we are sure this is the Messiah. Now it's on your hands, in your lap. What will you do with this Jesus called Christ? Jesus said, I will never forsake you I'll be with you always, even to the end time. 
He'll be there just the same. Again, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. A little while the world won't see me no more, yet you'll see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Say, how can I be sure of it, old Brother Branham? If I could just be sure. St. John 14, 12, he said, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. He's now waiting to be called on the scene to prove that to you. That's right. So let's go wake Jesus in our lives. He was alive here not long ago. He healed you one time. He did this and that. He's alive to you then. He's alive tonight. Call him on the scene. It's like I've said, if Shakespeare was in me, I'd do the works of Shakespeare. If Christ is in you, you'll, you'll believe God's word just like he did. He defeated the devil on every time he comes, said, it's written. That's all. And that stood on it. Satan noted he believed that. And he got away from him. Then call him to confirm his word. Oh, my. Make it Hebrews 13, 8, right? Then the doubts and fear will cease just like the winds did. Them old winds going through your mind. Maybe I won't get it. Maybe it won't be me. Maybe he won't do this. Don't they know maybe to it? He promised it. That takes all the maybes out of it. If I know he was here, well, here he's identifying himself just the same tonight by the same means and the same promise that he did when he was here on earth. That's how the disciples had to believe him. The popular belief that the man was crazy. Anybody knows that, don't you? That the man was crazy. And he was a fortune teller of some kind of evil spirit of Beelzebub who could read their minds. Some evil spirit like fortune telling. Jesus told him that would be blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Now, it has been written, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. I, if, I, if ye abide me and my word in you, then ask what you will, and it will be given to you. See? Now, it has been written, As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. All these promises that he's been given... Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. All those promises, it has been written. It's been written. These signs shall follow them and believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. It's been written. Now let it be done. Amen. Amen. Wake Jesus. Call him on the scene. Are you scared to do it? Are you afraid to take God's challenge? Let's pray. Bow our heads just a moment. Everybody just as reverent as you can be for the next few minutes now. Just don't move. Just sit real still. If the organ will softly play, if you will, the, some song. Come down, Lord Jesus, into our hearts. Make us to know our weakness. Mold me, O Lord. Pray now. Lord Jesus, I'm in need. Mold me and make me, Lord. I'm just a little bundle of clay now. After thy will, while I'm yielding, Oh, waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. All around over the building everywhere, just be deeply in prayer now. I want you to pray. Quite time now. 
Just pray, say, Lord Jesus, make me now a believer. Take all the unbelief out. I want you to pray a little bit just before I call the prayer line. My son said he'd give out a great host of prayer cards. He went down every aisle and everybody wanted a card. Got one. I'm going to pray for you. We're going to have the line just like we had before. The old-fashioned line. Come up here and pray and lay hands on the sick. I want you to believe. Do you feel like that you could recognize him? Do you realize that he's in the boat tonight? He's in this little boat, this little ark, this little body of believers. You believe he's riding along with us tonight, sailing life, Solomon. If you really believe it with all your heart, just raise your hand and say, I believe it. I believe it. I now accept it. Father, you see their hands. Mine with it. I believe you too. Now we're waiting, Father. Come, Lord Jesus. One night, when the disciples were bothered, they'd been talking to somebody. They didn't know who it was. They said he was a stranger around the country. But one night when they shut the doors and got him on the inside, he'd done something just like he did before his crucifixion and his resurrection. They knew it was him. Come again tonight, Lord, and do that for us, will you? While we're waiting, we know we've seen you do it. And may you take all the fear out of the people's hearts. Through Jesus' name, may everyone that we lay hands on tonight, may they be healed, every one of them. May there not be a feeble person. May every sick person dying, heart trouble, and female trouble and cancer and TB and leukemia, whatever it might be, may they be healed tonight, Lord. May as they pass through this line and we lay our hands upon them, may they recognize it's just not going by man, but God and man is one. God has come into man and God does nothing apart from man. That's what he does. His works is through man. He made man his partner. When Jesus stood looking up on the harvest, he said, the harvest is ripe. The labors are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest. And he was the Lord of the harvest. In other words, ask me to do what I know is right to do. But he had connected himself with his disciples. They was the one to ask. He said, you have not because you ask not. You ask not because you believe not. But Father, we believe. And we're asking tonight for your mercy again with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, each one of you now, with your prayer cards, we're going to have you <clears throat> to line. Now, I don't know where they're probably upstairs, downstairs, and where they are. We're going to have about a, about a half hour here or more for prayer for the sick. It's just now nine or just a little bit after. We think we can do it and get through. Now, look. Now, don't nobody leave. Everybody sit real still now. You're wanting a healing service. That's what we've been waiting for. Have you been waiting for healing service? All right. It's here now. And the healer is here. Jesus Christ. He's here. I remember. What if he had on this suit here? That he had his, his, one of his servants, brother and sister Collins, sitting out there from my tabernacle to give me. What if, if he was here wearing this suit? And he was standing here just like I'm standing here now. Do you know, if you'd say, Lord, will you heal me? Do you know he could not do it against your unbelief? How many knows that's true? You'd have to believe him the same as you do now. That's right. You'd have to believe him just like you do now. And remember, what he's already done, he cannot do again. See, he's put it completely from his reach now. He's put it in your reach. He's done all he can do. Is that right, ministers? There isn't a thing he can do about it. It's out of his reach. It's in your reach. For he was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes we were healed. See? See? It's out of his reach. It's, but he's brought it to your reach. It's in your reach now. It was put there for you. He just pointed to where it was at. Well, you say, if I... It's always been a puzzle to me if he's... If really the truth is, does he still live? Certainly he lives. What's this you're bumping into all the time? What's that condemns you when you're wrong? What's that it makes you believe? That's him. You might not be able to open your eyes and see him because he's in spirit form, the invisible God. 
but he dwells among a visible people, making himself visible by his promised word in that people. Do you understand that now? Here, before we call the prayer line, I trust God will do this. I, I love you, Life Tabernacle. You know that. I've been your brother. I've tried to be anyhow. I've done many failings, but I've tried to be. Listen. Come to yourself tonight. <laughs> Wake up before it's too late. <laughs> Wake up quickly. He's here with us. Now, I want each one of you, I'm going to, with the bottom of my heart, I'm going to try to call the people that I know in this building. And no matter, if I look past you, that shows that I, I pass you by. If the light of, the, of this is over you, I'll pass it by. I'm pretty sure this is Brother Julius Statscliffe, his wife and family, sitting right here on this front seat. Uh, I'm sure of that. And then the next person that I see that I know, now just a moment, I seen somebody a few moments ago that I thought I recognized, and that was Brother Evans, but I've lost where he's at now. Brother Welch Evans. Yeah, yeah, pardon me. Yes, and Fritz Singer sitting right next to him. That's that family sitting right here. Evans and Fritz Singer sitting there together. And now here's Brother and Sister Dow sitting right here. I know them, and I know this little girl here, one of them, the little June. That's Brother Evans, Sister Evans' daughter. And I heard Fred Softman say, Amen. There's nobody who says it like him. He's in here somewhere. I don't know where he's at. He's back in the back somewhere. Where are you at, Fred? Where, where? Oh, yes, back there. And is that Brother Woods sitting there by you? Uh, Brother Woods, all right. Well, this is a tape boy sitting here, Jim McGuire. And that's Brother Blair sitting right there. All right, I think that's all that I see that I know. Now, I might have seen you. Some of your faces look like I've seen them, but I don't know who they are. Now, the Holy Spirit knows that. But now you people, that I, it's, and, and I know you, you know I know you. Don't, you, you, just, you just pray, don't pray for nothing yourself. Don't try to touch him. Just pray for me. Amen. Just pray for me that the God that you know that I serve, that he might be merciful to somebody else sitting by. Amen. Are you praying? And let's just ask him if he will identify himself. Messiah. Yeah, I believe, I'm not sure, but I think I see Sister Moore. Is that Sister Moore? I, I thought she that was her. She's lost a little weight, and that's the reason I didn't recognize her first, but I thought that I recognized her sitting right over there. Now, just pray now, everybody, and be just as, just as reverent, and you look this, or look down, whatever you want to, and just pray. And now, listen, I want to ask you something. Now, let me take this scripture for tonight. Instead of the woman touching his garment, let's just take it back to what I've been preaching, the Word. Now, the Bible said that the Word of God is sharper, more powerful than a two-edged sword. That's Hebrews 4. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart and the mind. Is that right? Now, if ye abide in me, in my Word abide in you. Now, the Word is the promise that the Word itself is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Is that right? Now, pray. How could that be more clear? Pray. Now, just be real reverent and pray, not knowing you. And you that I know, pray for somebody that I don't know. That the Lord will touch somebody that they might in touching. Now, quickly I see it arising. Over to my left, over against the wall to my extreme left, is a man sitting there that's praying. I don't know him. And that light hangs right over him. And the man has a lung trouble that he's praying about. He's had a couple of operations on those lungs. He's a, a middle-aged man wearing glasses, gray in hair. And he's... Uh, you believe, sir? 
the man I'm speaking to, Mr. Buford, that is your name, sir. You believe now. Jesus Christ will make you whole if you'll believe it. i never seen that man in my life. Now, if anybody wants to see him, would you stand on your feet ever who the man was? Stand up or up there. There you are. i never seen him in my life. Now, what, what is that? Stop. Can you explain that, Brother Branham? I cannot. Who could explain that? I can't. No. Here. There's a lady sitting way back towards the back. And I see her praying and I see a man reeling and kind of throwing his hands up in the air. He's staggering. It's uh, her husband. He's an alcoholic. He drinks all the time. And she's praying for his release. Her name is Mrs. Morgan. Raise up your hand. That is right. I'm a stranger to her. But that is true. Stand up, lady. It was just called. There you are. And I don't know the woman. Tell me what she touched way back there. What is the word? A discerner. And of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You all may sit down now. Rejoice. Be happy. If you desire to sit down, you don't have to. You just suit yourself. Whatever you want to do. Just be happy and rejoice because the Lord has been good to you. Here's a lady right out here in front of me. And she's very sick. Perhaps sicker than what she thinks she has. She's actually suffering with hemorrhoids. And they're becoming cancerous. Mrs. Morgan. Not Mrs. Morgan. I'm sorry. It's Mrs. Anderson. If you will believe with all your heart, Jesus Christ will make you well. You believe that, lady? Stand up on your feet if that's right. I don't know the lady. She's exactly in line with this other lady, and I can see that's still hanging there. That's the reason. The other night, you may sit down if you wish to, sister, and believe, and you'll be made well. Mr. Woods here, I was went down with him for a day's hunting down in Kentucky. While I was standing there in the place, his sister-in-law, not a Christian, come by thinking she had cancer on her throat. I'd seen a vision that morning of a woman wearing a checkered dress. She had on a red coat. And when she went in the other room and t- didn't know why she come by, took off that red coat. Come back, she had on a check address. I said, come here. That was it. The Holy Spirit told her what it was, and that was it. She didn't even have to go to the doctor. It was finished. A few minutes after that, there's a man not knowing why. He come up dying with a heart trouble. And he said, have you got company? And the lady said, Brother Branham is out there with banks. He said, thanks be to God. Now, one in there laying back in a chair, dying in a heart attack. The Lord healed him. Two or three days after that, said he had had a bit of trouble with it since then. Up come the sister-in-law coming in. The daughter-in-law, rather. A young woman, Mrs. Cox. And at the tabernacle a few days before that, there'd been a lady healed with diabetes that was sitting. I seen that girl rise in the vision. I wouldn't call her because she comes out of that tabernacle. And the day or two after that, she had been taken to the clinic for examination, and she had awful diabetes. Uh, she's on the road then back to get her, her, her blood uh, checked again. And then she, she'd have to quit work. Her arms is done, went numb and things. I said, Margie, when the doctor examines you, your faith has healed you. And they took her to the clinic, the same clinic again, examined her again, and it was gone. Just on and on, on and on. It just keeps going on because He is God and He fails not. You believe that? I see a man sitting here looking at me now. He's had a little trouble in his life. He had a mumps when he was... He's kind of got something on his heart. He's looking right at me. 
His children's all boys. He wants a girl now. You know, that man is a preacher too. Mr. Bird, Reverend Mr. Bird, raise up your hand, sir. That's true, isn't it? God grant you your request, sir. See how simple? God dwells in simplicity. You believe that? Working in simplicity is wonders to perform. You've lost your sense of smell, haven't you, lady? Say, you're looking so honestly at me. You were praying and I call you. You have your request. You are a minister's wife. That's right. You've lost your sense of smell and you've got a great burden on your heart. You've got two sons that you're praying for. That's right. Your name is Sister Leg. I never saw her in my life. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Is that right? All things are possible if thou canst believe. You believe now His presence is here? Isn't He a discerner of the thoughts, the intents of the heart? You know, ask those people. Check around if anybody's in doubt. Ask them. I've never seen the people in my life. That's true. You believe God can take that tumor out of you? Looking around there, her getting healed. You believe He can heal the tumor? Make you well? You do? This lady here next to you too, with swelling in her body and things, you think the Lord can make you well? Both of you? You do? All right. He can if you'll believe it. You sit looking at me there, sir. Do you believe that God can heal that prostrate trouble sitting right back there with that black tie on? You believe God to heal the prostrate trouble? That's what you have. If that's right, raise up your hand. That's right. All right. Mm-hmm. See? You believe? He's in the ship. Here he is right here. His word doing just what it said it would do. Taking the secrets of the heart and making it known. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord Jesus, I pray for these handkerchiefs that's laying here, these sick and afflicted. After they're standing here, Lord, it's a very... A creative voice of God speaking through human beings while faith is vibrating one from the other. May these handkerchiefs be blessed. And the people that they are put up on, may they be blessed and be healed. And now, Father, while your spirit is here, and the disciples now, the followers of you now, see that you're in the boat. There's no need of being afraid. There's nothing going to harm anything. While you're here, you're the creator. Let it be so, Lord, that their faith won't fail when they walk into this prayer line now. May they be healed. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. How can we be sure that He is? Are you sure? We are convinced. I am thoroughly convinced that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. Are you? I'm convinced that I know that I don't know those things. Now, well, look here. I want to tell you something. These here are just little minor things that happen. How about those who go, uh, who's around home and goes with me in a meeting saying, raise up your hands, brothers, if you all and sisters, you, it goes with me in a meeting around. And it's the things that happens. Why? This is just minor things. I want to tell you different places and what's going to happen here. Be down here. We're going to meet a man. You're going to try to keep me away from him. Don't do it because I'm supposed to go. His wife is a certain, certain thing. She's going to be healed. I'm going to tell him this. This boy crosses the streets. going to ask a certain thing. I'll tell him a certain thing. He'll do this and do that. Why? It's just constantly all and all the time like that. It's Jesus Christ, not a human being. It's Christ. I'm a human being, but he's Christ. What is the gift, Brother Branham? I can't explain it. The only thing I know is just let William Branham get out of the way. That's all. And he just takes the clay and works through it. Believe it, will you, Shreveport? Believe it with all your heart. And don't doubt you'll have your healing when you pass through here. Now, visions doesn't heal you. Visions only identifies His Word to be true. See? You're already healed. Visions only proves that He is here and He is still the living Word. But as far as healing you, it doesn't. It only lets you know that He's here. He's already healed you. His blood, the reason He's here is because He healed you. The reason He's here is because He saved you. 
His life was given for you. His blood was shed. And He's here in the form of the Holy Ghost to work through us to prove that He's here. But your healing is with your faith. If you believe it, it's so. Amen. Now, how many on this side has prayer cards over in this aisle over here? I want you to step out in the aisle on this side. And as soon as they get through, then this aisle here, step out on that side. And then this aisle here, go right around and follow right in behind and this one here. And we'll come right around and pray. Brother Jack, more, where's he at? Is it, is it all right if I call up ministers to help me? It's just perfect all right. Any minister here that believes in the message of the Lord, that believes that the Bible has taught these things, and you're thoroughly convinced that Jesus Christ is here with us tonight, and you would want to come here and, and help us lay hands uh, upon the sick. If, you're, if there's something in your life now that's holding you back from faith, don't come, see? Because you've got to believe that when you lay your hands upon this person that they're going to get well. You're only joining your faith with theirs. See what I mean? You're joining your faith with theirs by contacting them, laying your hands on them. And if you've got a little bit of doubt about it, don't you do it. And then look, everyone that comes in the prayer line, if you've got the least bit of a doubt that you're not going to be healed tonight, don't come in. It'll only make you worse. Okay? You'll only get worse. See? So don't come in the prayer line. Wait till tomorrow. Do it tomorrow sometime. Some other time when you got faith. Don't do it because it's only for those who have faith to believe. Now, I want you, ministry brethren, to come up here and stand with me while we pray for the sick. And you're on a platform. Come right down here in front now. Right down in front of the aisle here because we can't bring those uh, cases and the wheelchairs and things up over this aisle. I'm going to step right down here and pray for them. Come right down here. And any of you man back there that's ministers that believe with all your heart. And now, it's your, you're sincere. You, you really want, you believe it's going to happen. See? And then if you believe it, and they believe it, and when you lay your hands upon them, something's got to happen. If both of you's going to believe it. See what I mean? All right, line up right here, brother. Make a double line right across this way now, each one of you ministering brother. I wish you'd come down this way just a little bit so they can have that aisle to go back in, if you will. Call some of these over here will go right back this middle aisle. If you'll just kind of make your way right down here, my brothers, if you will. That's fine. I think we ought to thank the Lord for a, for a group of men like this that's willing to stand out in the face of critics and anything else and take their stand and say, I believe it. Amen. I'm very grateful for a man of that type. I'm glad to put my shoulders with theirs, to put my heart with theirs, to put my emotion with theirs, to put my faith with theirs. And around the, the bread of life and the Word of God, we are brothers together, joint heirs in the kingdom with Jesus Christ. These men might not be able to stand up and make the Word. That's, that's a gift. That's just a gift. It's to show the last sign at the last day. That's exactly what it's to do. But these men has just exactly the same right to lay hands on the sick as anyone else. Me or, or Roberts or Tommy Hicks or Tommy Osborne, anybody else. They have the same authority by the same God because they're servants of that same God. Now, when you people, I'm going to have Brother Price or somebody or Brother Moore. Uh, you're going to come help us pray or you're going to stay at the... Yeah. All right, you go get the mic down, all right? Now, I'm going to have Brother Price. Now, when we come through here, now look. Let this settle it. This is it. Don't have to shake him. You don't have to just say, Lord God, I believe it. Yeah. Okay? He's awake right now. He's done proved himself. He's done been aroused among you. Amen. I feel him. <laughs> and I know he's here because I see his evidence the way he's working. Yeah. Just think, the Creator Himself, the Word Himself, has been made vivid evidence right here with us tonight. And if you take my Word, it's just moving all out through the building like that. You can just stand here keep calling, 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 calling. But I guess eight or ten people, or maybe more, was brought out in the line. That's enough to identify that His presence is here. Now, Brother Price, if you will, I want the congregation to sing real softly, The Great Position Now Is Near. The sympathizing Jesus. If he died that you might be made well, certainly he's in sympathy with your sickness. He, he sympathizes with you because you are sick. And as you come through the line, 
man of God is going to lay hands upon you. I'm going to stand here and take my place with these man of God. Come right back around. And, now, look, don't forget this now. Think hard now. When you pass through the line, have your faith fixed like this. When I come to the end of that line, it's all over. I'm going right down that aisle. I'm standing here sick. I'm standing here bothered. I'm standing here fearful. I'm standing here not knowing what I'm, what, 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 what's going to take place. The doctor said this and they said this and said, but when I go down there, I'm going to have my hands up in the air, thanking the Lord that I'm well. And just watch what happens. Now, I would, many times, people are very conscious when you're watching them. Sick people especially. They're watching you. And that's what the, the, the eye is a gate to the soul. That's the reason Jesus let them out. Of course, they will not be as many healed this way as it would be if you had them one by time out and taken it down. But look how many wants to be prayed for. See, you can't take them like that. But now, this is the way that your faith has to catch it. Now, don't say, I, I don't know how it's... How to explain it, nobody does. But we believe it because the Word said so. And the vindicated Christ is here with us. Called Him on the scene. What did He do when we called Him? He showed us, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. Only believe. Just believe it with all your heart. While we, with our heads bowed now, and Brother Price, or some of them here, Brother Price will direct the lines, and each one go through, take your seat back again. And if we sing... Uh, the great position, and we'll pray. Now, that's everybody beforehand. I want to pray because let's pray now. Remember, Peter, when he's called to the house of Darkus, he prayed over in a corner, got up, went over and put his hand on Darkus and said, Darkus, rise up. A Heavenly Father, we're likewise praying. You are here. You made yourself known. You're our Lord, our Savior. You've healed us many times. And the hour here where hundreds of people will be coming from that basement and around every places to be healed. They'll be coming in this prayer line. Here's your servants, all of us believing that you're going to do just what you promised. And we're going here to lay our hands upon these men and women, boys and girls, as they pass through this line. May each one of them believe, Lord. And we're going to sing this sweet old hymn, The Great Physician, and that's you, Lord. Now, we're going out on the basis of thus saith the Lord. Our faith is telling us, pulsating in our own hearts, that these signs shall follow them that believe. And we are believers. We are standing a mighty army. And we're going to meet Satan's challenge. We're meeting it in the name of Jesus Christ. Right there. And now everyone with their heads bowed praying. And some of you singing the great position. And the prayer line will be moving. Brother Price will be leading the song and directing the people as they come through. The Lord bless you now. The great physician now is near the same. Jesus one time said, Know what I have done to you? How many believes now, with hands went on them, lying, coming through there, that that done exactly what Jesus said it would do. Do you believe that? His word cannot fail. Because that you have said this, because that you have witnessed that you believe it, I'm going to... Believe this with all my heart and say, God Almighty makes you well. Because I know it's a scripture. It's the truth. I believe that every person comes through the line will be made totally well. Now, what do you do with it? You don't doubt it. You hold it right before you. Your token. What is your token? The Holy Spirit in your heart. You pass through that line. It has to happen. There's no way for it. No matter how many you've been through before, this is it. This is the hour. This is the time. It's over. It's settled. Just forget you ever was sick or ever had it, ever afflicted or anything. God will take care of it for you. You believe it? Amen. I believe it with all my heart. Now let's stand up, each one of us. Right up like this.
And now, as the brother said in his pamphlet I read today, to raise your hand is a universal sign of surrender. I surrender all. Let's sing it. I surrender, I surrender all. All to Thee, my Christ, my Savior. I surrender all. Jesus, I... My will, my doubts, my faith, my heart, my body, my sickness, my life, I surrender all. I Remain with all your heart as you raise your hands. I surrender. I surrender my faith, Lord. I surrender my everything. I'm healed. I surrender. I surrender all. Uh, all to Isn't he wonderful? Now think, we mean that everything is surrendered. I'm no more my own thinking. I don't even go to think like I think, Lord. I'm just going to think like you think. And you promised that I was healed. I think that. I surrender my thinking. I won't no more think about my sickness. I won't think about the disease I had. I ain't thinking about nothing but thinking what you said. Now, right out in front of you stands a person just like you was a few minutes ago. You were sick down here. But there's a well person standing there. Jesus Christ is calling to that well person right beyond it. Now, you just by faith as you close your eyes, walk right into that well body. Hey, then just keep on walking. Just keep on going. I surrender all. Lord bless you. I 